Good morning, everyone. My name is Kathleen. So welcome back to our weekly Entrepreneurship Impact. So today we have a guest, Thomas. So she, he has been doing uh, entrepreneurship for quite a few times. Maybe you would like to intro about yourself and let them know who are you. Thomas. All right. Hi, everyone. Morning, morning. So my name is Thomas. Currently, I'm managing a few portfolios. So I'm a coach, trainer, speaker, as well as a wealth planner. So I brand myself as a personal wealth coach. I manage different portfolios. Aside from managing uh, financial portfolios, I also run a coaching and training company. We specialize in educating people about wealth building skills. So for my side, right, when we talk about wealth building skills, it comes in three areas. Financial management, business growth, as well as life mastery. So to go into specific financial management, essentially, is the mindset and practices they can have so that they can have a better management as well as a better system for them to utilize their wealth. And for business growth, is for entrepreneurs to amplify their business outreach. But of course, it's also open to employees as well because some business skills is applicable there. For example, networking, personal branding, communication and presentation. And life mastery essentially is about having a peak performance as well as mindset so that we can perform at the next level. So all of these different components, if we look at it from an overall perspective, are essential to build wealth itself. So my company actually developed that uh, system for our clients. Uh. Oh, interesting. <laughs> So, you'll be in this journey and how, how was it so far? Okay, so as of my entrepreneurial journey, Xiang Tang Nian, <laughs> I must say that the science of entrepreneurship actually started when I was in primary school. But it wasn't because I was selling lemonades or toys or whatsoever. Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> but when I look back, right, in primary school itself, right, I watch a lot of cartoon programs as well as play a lot of like, those uh, online games. But the interesting thing is, after each time that I indulge in those activities, I will imagine and visualize myself being one of those characters and creating a story for me, all in my mind. It's like very specific, very realistic. It's like Inception like that. I'm not sure you have all heard of Inception. Right? Yeah. So that is when I notice that I have signs of creativity. Someone who loves to create new things. And it propagates from there. So... When I grow older, when I take up leadership roles or white run programs, I will always go from the creative angle, right? Try to innovate new ways to do things itself. And not only that, okay, so a bit embarrassing to say, but now I'm going deep into my inner purpose, is that whenever I visualize all these things, uh, I will always imagine myself as the hero. <laughs> and why is it so? And I, I ask myself truly, deeply, why, why, why will I always visualize myself as the main character? I mean, I can visualize myself as the villain or something. And it is because in my inner purpose, uh, what I truly want to do is to impact and inspire people. And which is why when I run my business, it's drive on these two, en two engines, innovation and impact. Ah. So when I started my first business itself, it is when I was in university. So back then, right, I, was ex I started my marketing and lead generation agency. So that was my first business. And I was also exposed to financial advisory. That's when they have student outreach also. Mm -hmm. So uh, some people may not consider it entrepreneurship. For me, I do consider it as a form of running a business because it's still considered uh, self-employed, we run our own initiative, all this. But as it time progresses, right, I see that what I want to do is to revolutionize the whole system itself. So I look into the Western side. The Western side, they have a system of money coaching. So they don't sell any financial products whatsoever. They just educate people on financial management in terms of the mindset, in terms of the practices, in terms of the system. So that is when, right, I bring back this concept, right, and introduce it complement it with financial advisory itself. So instead of just promoting products, what we also do is to share about all these practices, about all this system itself. Because uh, not everyone may be open to products at some point in time, but they may be open to beneficial practices in terms of managing their finance. Ah, so that is the finance part. And moving on to the next phase itself, that's when I'm exposed to ecosystem building or rather one of the core topics which we are going to talk about today. So when we talk about ecosystem building, right, essentially is to create different branches of business which complements one another. So I was taking, I, I took a while to identify this core theme of mine. 
what is this commonality between all these different things? Previously, I brand myself as a personal finance coach. But back then, I also help people with their business and their uh, peak, ma- peak performance management as well. So it doesn't really align together. And that's where I really deep dive, right? And start to come up with this concept of wealth building skills, which comes from these branches itself, like financial management, business growth. So uh, earlier on, I mentioned that I got a marketing and lead generation business, right? I amplify it into business growth itself. Because when we talk about business growth, marketing and lead generation is one of it. But of course, I added a few new branches like uh, communication and presentation, as well as networking, personal branding, etc. So this is all how the concept comes together to form eventually this whole business of mine. Yeah. Oh, so that's wow, nice. mouthful. <laughs> right, yeah, no difference the creativity life. you mentioned mm-hmm. since childhood. And, and you know, what get you started and motivated you know, to start all this? Like, you know, other than just doing a normal job and like, everyone mm. else. So I, I started my journey when I was in university at the time. So like back then, early on, like what, what I was mentioning, that I start to realize I like to create things. So entrepreneurship is the perfect vehicle for me because I get to be at the forefront, creating new initiatives, deciding how the direction goes forward. Yeah, but I started in university itself because that's where I feel that we have room to make mistakes, financial obligations not that high yet. So just go learn, just go learn. So back then, I already signed up for courses on this. My first course I signed up is with this guy. You'll probably see his ads before. Imran Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Not sure if you all seen this as before, but that's the first course that I signed up as a student. Ah, that's where I learned about digital marketing and lead generation. Yeah, so then the financial advisory side is the company, they have a lot of student outreaches, so they find student representative itself. So that's when I start. But of course, along the way, I make tweaks, I make combinations to form this whole system itself. Lor. So what motivates me, I would say, is truly my inner purpose. Lah. I, I am lucky enough that I constantly ask myself what is my inner why so i get to find my life direction pretty early and that is two engines itself innovation and impact so my business really run on uh, giving as much value as i can possible and yeah that brings me here <laughs> and it, it keeps me going every day lah. so I, I i've been always releasing a lot of content so even if it's free content i also release and i feel happy doing it yeah so it keeps me motivated to continue this journey down. So along all this journey so far, right, is there any down moment that, you know, you have been struggled during this period? Right. So uh, down moments, huh? okay, for me, right, I'm fortunate enough that I go learn a lot. So I go explore on ways that I can do business in a safe manner. I personally have this principle that I will only explore into lean business models. Business models which don't require high cost but have high profit margin. So from the start, I was exposed to this concept earlier. And Imran did share a bit about this concept. So I was fortunate enough that I'm exposed to this concept so that even if the revenue is not high, right, I will not make losses. That's something that's guaranteed. So there are a, a, a couple of different uh, lean business models. For example, education business itself, be it tutoring or teaching about different kinds of soft skills as well as technical skills itself. Don't require a lot of startup costs. Uh, agency model, marketing agency, lead generation agency, sales agency, can you can consider a profit sharing model with the clients itself. So don't require a lot of startup uh, fees also. Or affiliate model, commission-based model. So all of these different models, right? They have lean system. The cost is not that high, but the profit margin is relatively high. And that's how I keep myself safe when I run business itself. Yeah, I believe that's every entrepreneur would would like to look for in terms of low cost and high profit margin to mm. start with, especially when they are just started their business. Mm. Yeah, so uh, with regards to that, I would say a lot of entrepreneurs, they are very ambitious, which is a great thing, but they are also very, uh, they spend a lot lah, because they are so passionate about their business, right? They spend a lot. Mm. So I have friends who like start printing company, print shirt, all this. They buy the machinery, they have the place, all this which is very high cost itself. But there are ways to do it that reduces the cost. What if you are a middleman, you know, the other people supply the shirt, 
you just do the orders, you just create the design and do the orders. Yes, definitely the profit will be lower, but it saves so much cost itself. Or in fact, catering business itself. People do catering business, high startup cost. But how can you do it in a living way? Perhaps you are in the middle man. You have all these different suppliers. What you just need to do is to have a website to just uh, promote some of the dishes. But you can have all the different suppliers. Huh? They won't know who are the suppliers. The customer will only know what is on the website itself. Of course, you, the key is to have this agree to strike agreements with all these different companies and to have a great great deal where it's a win win situation. Huh? So that, that is certainly some ideas to explore. I see, I see. So other than this lean model you mentioned, like, is there anything mm. else how you're going to um, make sure your business is um, you know, progressing? Okay, so I believe in this principle of maximum value, minimum resources. I believe how well we do in our business right, is based on how much value we give. But the mistake is a lot of people, maybe they are... Uh, it, there can be two parties, one which gives so much value that it eats into their profit that is not sustainable, or one just focus on quick sales that is not sustainable in the long run. So the great balance to strike up is how you can create maximum value with minimum resources so that we can scale it up. Uh, and it can be something as simple as just dropping a positive text or dropping some positive Facebook message, giving some constructive remarks. So all these things don't require any cost, but it creates that customer relationship, it creates that connection itself, and it can go to future business itself. So it's, the key is always to think, how can you value add your clients or your audience base without spending too much? So for me, right, I release a lot of free content like on my social media, etc. So that it creates my branding, it gives people value, and then from that, I can build an audience, build a audience base, build a fan base, and build my business from there as well. And giving value, if you think about it, information, right? Sometimes we may have the thing that we may have the mindset, oh, don't give too much. Huh? Little, or else, what, 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 what can I teach during my program? But nowadays, right, if you think about it, they can just Google and find it anyway. Mm. So just give abundantly. And then from there, right, you can actually brand your proficiency for already. You see, Tony Robbins, uh, his mm. materials, everything can be found in the book or this. But why people still go for his seminars, etc.? Because of the experience itself. They sell the experience. So it's okay that we just share our knowledge, share our value. People will still employ our services. Right? Mm. Uh, because they want the experience, the personal touch itself. That's true. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's great to hear that yeah, there are a lot, a lot of resources that you are given. So anything else, you know, how, how can you make sure you are standing out from other of your competitor, let's say, mm. in this industry? Okay, so my, my suggestion will always to be build your brand. Build a very strong brand. Because when you have a very strong brand, regardless what you do, you will have fan base, you will have supporters. So a lot of businesses, they pivot, but the people still follow them. For example, there's this entrepreneur called John Lee. I'm not sure if you've heard of him before. He started out as a property investor, but now he pivoted to teach about more about social media and he still has his fan base itself because he has a very strong brand already. So you want to build a very strong brand and your brand need not be just what you do, but why you do it. Your brand may be someone who gives abundance or your brand may be someone who wants to impact people. So whatever you do, people will know you as someone who wants to impact. So whatever business model you come out from it, right, you will still have supporters. Huh? Ah, which is why people can build an ecosystem from there. So like for example, Google, we started out as a search engine, right? A specialist in search engine. But right now it's transiting more towards uh, IoT or Internet of Things already. And they still have their supporters. Although they, they, may be ha they may have a lot of different branches, right? They still have their supporters because they already built a very strong brand. Same for Amazon, uh, same for Tony, even Tony Robbins himself, he got a lot of different brands. He, do, he not only do life coaching, he also do business coaching, he also do finance coaching. But people brand him as someone who's able to give breakthroughs. So have a strong brand, create a strong brand itself. Okay. So then I... You know, um, other than creating a strong brand, I believe that, like, do especially during this period, like COVID period, like how how do you make sure you you are still able to reach out to people, or is there any struggle you are 
or changes you, you are facing during this period? Hmm. Okay, so I always believe that the key is speed of adaptability, speed of adaptability, how you adapt accordingly. So right now, right, COVID, a lot of people don't dare to go out, but the usage of online platform and social media have amplified so much. So that is where we should jump on right now, which is why online seminars, interview, even I take the initiative to approach different organizations to share and Fortunately enough, I'm able to be here. <laughs> so you really want to leverage on it. You really want to leverage on what is the benefit. Because in every difficulty, there will be opportunity, right? So I won't say that uh, online will definitely be the way to go, to be honest, because we don't know what is next. What if one day there's a COVID virus, but it is an online virus? Then online platforms will be affected. We have to quickly pivot to physical platforms. So it's all about the speed of adaptability itself. Uh, a lot of people, right, they don't change. They don't want to change. And I understand it's very difficult to change, especially those with a strong brand. You want them to suddenly change to something else, right? Mm. They have that connection there, very hard. But no, you just have to change yourself. In terms of branding, right, we have to constantly do tweaks. Of course, we don't do 180 degree change, like, or else people will not recognize us. We have to constantly do tweaks. Right? Uh, so the, the key is about adaptability, about how you can constantly tweak towards the right direction itself. Mm. Okay, so just just curious, I, I hear a lot of your, your branding. So let's say if like someone who just started their business, like then how is in how they understand how the branding itself, like what should I brand myself or mm. how how you just curious how you creating and understand all this. Hmm. Okay, so I always encourage the using the power of stories, storytelling itself. So when I say storytelling, uh, people may think that, oh, uh, kindergarten story. Uh. No, uh, if we look around, everywhere is storytelling. Every brand has their story itself. So you want to ask yourself, what is your story? Why are you here in the first place? Yeah, you want to ask the inner purpose, just as Simon Sinek, the motivational speaker, always identify your inner why. Which is why I want to say the values I mentioned earlier. What is your value and how has your life built up along this, alongside this value? For example, per, per, perhaps you are someone who likes to practice giving abundance. How have your life been about abundance itself? And how this mindset of abundance lead you to building your business? Yeah, people, facts tell, stories sell. So when you share your story, people will know about you, people will know about your brand itself. I see. <clears throat> I see. Okay, is that simple enough? <laughs> so moving forward, right? You know, um, moving forward, what do you see about the trend in this industry? And are you going to change or like you you do you foresee any changes for your branding? Let's say or in moving forward. Alright, so uh, to be honest, we can't predict the future, lah, but we can try our best to adjust accordingly. So what I feel uh, moving forward nowadays, like the new norm is here already. Everything is going online. We have to adapt accordingly to uh, creating content online, creating services online, and creating programs online also. In terms of going forward, right, if we look at it, right, now that everything is online, right, it's easy to have global outreach. It is because of this situation uh, that I managed to have clients from overseas. Mm. Because now they are so open to the idea as well. And they may think, why not try to have some foreign perspective? Yeah, so that is my direction moving forward. I, I'm like doing international outreach already. And in terms of training, coaching, I think it's always a call that people want to be better. So for my industry of training and coaching, it's really... At the end of the day, you must allow people to see the value that you are able to make them better. You are able to help them achieve what you want. If you have that in mind, then you just tweak accordingly, right? So for example, those who are marketers, right? They may brand themselves as Facebook marketers. But what if one day Facebook has this regulation that marketing is so much uh, restricted, that there will be so much restriction to it. They have to tweak accordingly also. Uh, so... Ah, which brings me to the point that when you when we talk about specialists and generalists, a lot of people will say that specialists is the way to go, have more premium services, have more premium positioning. I agree with that. But the misconception people have, right, is that as a specialist, you need to go narrow, which is, I feel, not true. You can be a specialist in a broad sense. Like earlier on, I mentioned Amazon started out as a 
e-commerce specialist in selling books. Right now, it has different branches. Mm. Do we still consider it as a specialist? Personally, I do. Just that it is a specialist of e-commerce. Mm. Ah, so you also want to be a specialist, but you want to have a broad angle so that you can pivot accordingly. Instead of branding as a Facebook marketer, brand as a digital marketer or corporate business marketer whatsoever. Yeah, have a bigger brand, but you can still be a specialist. So for now, right, my brand is personal wealth coach. I have room to navigate. Mm. Uh, like in overseas, some they brand themselves as personal wealth coach, but one of their portfolios is doing property investment. But right now, if property is not doing well, right, can brand can go to other aspects of building wealth as well. In fact, for John Lee, the example like I mentioned earlier, his brand is Wealth Dragon. <laughs> so he started out as a property investor. So now he's doing digital marketing, etc. Because digital and marketing and social media is also able to bring wealth. So they have that overarching brand while being a specialist itself. That's okay. Yeah. I mean, specialist and generalist. Like, mm. I mean, it seems like there are a lot, a lot different branches to cover. So it's like, how, how do you manage all these different branches and make sure it's specialized at the same time it is mm. able to, it's broad enough to cover a lot of people. Right. So oh, with regards to that, oh, have an anchor team. Have an anchor team. Of course, when you start out, right, you want to be focused. You want to focus on one branch. But you want to have an anchor team so that you can form different branches. For example, Virgin Group. What's the anchor team? Lifestyle. That's the anchor team itself. And it's fortunate because if they just depend on their airline, right? Now they break up already. So it's lucky that they have all these different branches and they have the anchor team of creating lifestyle. They have the gym, they have a radio station, etc. Right? So you want to have the anchor team. So uh maybe you can give me an example, I give a suggestion. <laughs> like personally for yourself. Uh, life, life demo, life demo. So what, what, what are some branches you have right now? I know life coaching is one, then... <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Um, and also, I also involve some marketing and also mm. um, sales. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Life and business strategies, just like Tony Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> the anchor thing is to help people go to the next level. Mm. Ah, something like that. Huh? But in terms of, I would say life, but in terms of business, is more technical, right? Like technical that, you know, have to build up. Okay, so I always believe there are three components, mindset, skill set, and tool set. Mm. Because when running a business, you need to have the right mindset or so. And in fact, I would say it's one of the most important ones. That's why you see entrepreneurs, some of them, they break out early, uh, then they can still do well again because they have the right mindset. Mm. Uh, skill set, yes, it's more of the technicality, but tool set is the equipment you can use to amplify your business itself. So it can be these three, three areas so. Oh, so these three are the foundation for you to build out your any kind of business. In yes, business. yes. Okay, so maybe last question for you today. Um, like let's say if there's one point for you to advise, right? Like what would you advise those who just started their entrepreneurship business or who wanted to start their entrepreneurship business? Well, this is a, always a very tough question because when people ask me uh, one thing, uh, I got a lot of things to say. <laughs> so I must identify one thing. Well, and uh, I would say entrepreneurship do not need to be a risky journey. In fact, I will always encourage uh, people who have full-time job, uh, don't quit your full-time job to start a business. Never do that. A lot of people, they say, oh, burn all bridges. Let's just jump into entrepreneurship. <laughs> the risk is quite high. Lah. You can do business and have a full-time job as well. Wait for things to stabilize and jump over. It's totally fine. In fact, like what I was mentioning, I do like help people to create business which are aligned to their full-time job. For example, people who are in HR, they can do communication coaching as well. Or people who are in management, they can do leadership coaching as well. It's totally fine. You can have something which is linked to your business so that your you are linked to your full-time job so that your attention will not be so divided and you can use resources here and there. Of course, you will seek for company approval, but yes, you, don't, you want to minimize risk as much as you can. A lot of people, they fear jumping into entrepreneurship because they fear that it's a very risky, it's a very risky thing, but it's all about your perspective and your strategy of making it as safe as you can. That is even safer than a full-time job because full-time job will be anytime lose it. But entrepreneurship, we are in control 
as long as we have that system to constantly give us income, right? Mm. It is relatively safe. Mm. Okay, so understand that is to you know the, the one key thing is to try to minimize yes. when you start out entrepreneurship business. Okay, great. So thanks, thanks for Thomas today. It is a uh, inspiring sharing and. Now I would like to open the questions to the ground. Like, do you all have any questions for Thomas and ask him about his experience or his journey so far? So, um, anyone would like to ask? Anybody asking? If not, I, I, I ask, I ask. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I, I will ask question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, you see, uh, okay, among, among entrepreneurship, right, that you do, right, correct? Okay, um, because when you want to do a lot of uh, uh, branches and a lot of um, different uh, angles and different perspectives, right, correct, of uh, businesses and values, you need a lot of energy to drive them. Because when you go large, you know, then after that, in pivot into a lot of areas, right, correct, then you will find a problem that is very hard for you to, to do because you, you only got 24 hours per day. So, so how you manage that? I'm just curious, yeah. Well, how I manage that? Because I always believe in this concept of work-life integration. Everything is part of my life and part of my work as well. In fact, uh, to be really open, so like both of us, we are in Toastmasters. Of course, I go to Toastmasters with that mindset of learning presentation and learning communication. But because people then know what I do and my outreach there is uh, relatively okay, they will also employ my services. I don't need to sell too much. I just tell them what I do. I always give value adding content. They employ my services. So it's already part of my lifestyle. Everything I do is linked to my life and my work as well. So people always talk about work-life balance, work-life balance. I believe more in work-life integration. How can we find a system where everything we do, we do contributes to these different areas? Uh, and why is it my life also? Because entrepreneurship helps me to learn. It helps to develop my mindset. And it also helps me to build my social circle because my clients are my friends. So it helps me in my life aspect as well. So it's an integration. Of, yeah, I believe that to truly strike that so-called balance is more of you want to integrate everything. Mm. I understand. Because I think, I think you also have very strong belief. So, so I think the energy source comes from your belief, I think. Because you're very, I mean, I, I can see you're very, like, a lot of energy, positive Excellent. energy. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I, I feel that, you know. So, maybe, so, maybe it's also the coffee la. Co coffee yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, <laughs> not, not so but I, I love it la. I, I mean I, I, I wake up every day feeling excited which is why I know that I'm in the right right path okay, hmm. maybe maybe you and me same got the prerequisite of success let's see two jeans defect <laughs> nah, joking joking okay yep uh, Jason you got any question? Uh, yeah yeah Hi Thomas. Hello. So my question is, uh, based on your international outreach, right, for the mm. past year. So, uh, actually, what, what, how they get into contact with you? Uh, what, what is the tool set that you got? I mean, which which part they are focused at that they mm. get get mm. to you? Okay. okay. So, uh, mm. to address it first. How do I have this international outreach? And to be really honest, uh, I have to thank Toastmasters once again. <laughs> <laughs> I think there are Toastmasters here because Toastmasters is an international movement and this concept amplifies even more during this period itself. Like we have meetings with people internationally and they have this platform where overseas people, they will promote their club. So there are people from Hong Kong, people from India, people from US, people from Indonesia even. So what I did uh, at the start of this period is I go visit all their clubs. You know, I always try to get some stage time. So for those of you who do not know, Toastmasters is a presentation and communication platform. So I get stage time by uh, volunteering for appointments or volunteering for the impromptu speaking. So I built my brand there. Already. Uh, that I always will connect with them on social media one. Even if that person, I just talk to that person once, right? I will just connect with the person on social media. So, so sometimes people won't accept my friend request, lah, but okay. Lah. <laughs> so why, why I want to connect with them on social media? Because that is how they can get to know me better without me selling too much. I'm very active in terms of posting my content whatsoever. So by doing that, right, it builds my brand already. And when I strike the right chord, right, people would ask me to do a sharing or uh, ask me what I'm doing. And then I would 
introduce my services. So I, I, I do have like a brochure where I list down all my programs that I will send to there and see uh, are they interested or not. Yeah, but always, right, be really open to giving uh, free pre so-called preview, free preview whatsoever. Of course, you don't need to share as much as your paid program, but always go get exposure, go get stage time. Uh, okay, we got say we, we got this say we uh, pay say It's just, have to we pay say. And in fact, for this this whole why do I have this opportunity today? Uh, it's really I we pay say. I just Facebook message uh, entrepreneurship impact. Hey, I see you all doing some sharing. Hey, can I come and share also? Or not? <laughs> it's all about exposure. Mm. Yeah. Oh, all right. All right. Thanks. I would say quite a good spirit. Like, I mean, this poor guy said. Have to, to la, have to lah. In a social media age as well, you, you have to put yourself out there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Get your brand, put yourself out there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else who like to ask maybe last questions? Hey, uh, can I ask a question? Uh, yeah, sure. Please, go ahead. <laughs> Hi, Thomas. Okay, I, I, I know you personally. I see that hey, you are very, very keen in... in providing your, your resources and so on and so forth. So my question to you is how do you balance between providing free uh, in terms of because that helps with your branding. So how do you balance between free and profit? Mm. Yeah, so how, how do you uh, balance your resources in terms of your time, your, your efforts and, and so that? What, what is the balance there? Is there a, a percentage or a ratio there? Mm. Okay, so you want to implement a few strategies. So oh, just now earlier on mentioned that the concept, right, that I want to strike, right, is maximum value, minimum resources. So my content, right, although I post so actively on social media, I actually take very little effort to do. How do I do so? I just allocate one day and I do all the content and I space it out. Sometimes it's my paid program, right, I just take part of it out and I slice it into different pieces so that I can disseminate out. I, I, of course, I never show my whole paid program out there. Lah. I take part of it, I disseminate everything out. And I read, so for those, for, for how I create my content uh, is I always like to put my picture in my uh, collateral. So not, not because I hear, uh, but there is research showing that people can connect the relatability when they see your face, which is why most of my collaterals, they can see my face one. And the thing is, uh, I've been actually reusing the pictures a lot of time. People may not notice it. Why? I take from different angles. I flip the other picture. I'm actually this way. It still look different one. But I take one one day uh, to take like maybe 50 pictures. Then I keep repurposing it. Uh, so my whole content, right? I use one day to create one month worth of content. So it does not take a lot of effort. I just need to post, 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 post. Ah, so that is something you want to consider. I know there are people out there who also want to do like uh, videography, to use video ads to promote. What I will always encourage is we take the video, right? You take one long video, right? But you slice, slice, maximize it. And then you want to post it on different platforms, not only on Facebook, but on Instagram, on uh, the WhatsApp, WhatsApp status, everything. Just release it out there. Yeah. And, that, and that, that, that's the, the sweet thing about this, all this content development. You can keep reusing it. People will forget one. When you reuse, they will still think it's a fresh content. They will forget one. If you look at Instagram, uh, some of the motivational speakers, uh, some of their content uh, is actually one year ago. Uh, they, just, they just post it again. Uh, so you have to create this system. That's very good tactic. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, feel, feel free to share, feel free to use. Okay. Thanks, thanks Thomas today. So it's really uh, insightful and I learned a lot personally as well, you know, how to build my own brand, all this and, and all this and also creativity of finding your own value. So is there anything else you'd like to maybe um, something else, last thing that you'd like to share to the audience? That Final thing, uh, mm, okay, la, I, I mean, uh, one, one, one more piece of advice is that people always say, uh, find your passion, find your passion, but sometimes passion don't transform into profit. La. I will always say we create our passion, not so much about find our passion. We want to see what our skill set is. Sometimes we like to do something, but we just can't make profit out of it. Then, like, really, it's not sustainable. So what we can make profit out of it, and then find how we can build passion out of it. That is something for you to consider when you all do your business. Mm. That's very true. 
Yeah, correct, correct. Okay, thanks, thanks Thomas today. So, um, so we will still sh um, post this video on the Facebook and also our YouTube as well. So feel free to connect Thomas through that and do subscribe to our YouTube. So, and also stay tuned to our next week for another speaker for entrepreneurship impact. Thanks everyone for attending today. Have a nice weekend again. Thanks Thomas. Thank you. Okay, bye. 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 bye.